All right, 4.1. 4.1, special angles. So if we have a circle, for example, with a radius r, and we place this circle onto the Cartesian plane, what you'll notice is that the angle that the radius makes with the x-axis turns out to be an angle that is considered in standard position. This particular line right here that we see here, the radius, that and the angle it makes with the x-axis is called an angle in standard position. Now, when we label in the quadrants, we always label on the Cartesian plane the quadrants from in the pattern of a C. These are special quadrants in the num uh, numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4 in Roman numerals. And these are special quadrants in the Cartesian plane. And it always starts in this corner in the label of a C to represent the Cartesian plane. Next, to measure the angle R makes with the positive x-axis, you must use the information given and trigonometry to solve the angle. So we're going to use different uh, trig ratios to solve the angle all depending on what information is given. For example, if you have a point on the circle called, which is at the end of the radius called P, we call that point the coordinates x, y on the Cartesian plane. x is the horizontal distance and y is the vertical distance. And x and y make a right angle in order to create a right angle triangle. If you look carefully, you could even use Pythagorean theorem to determine the special relationship that x, y, and r have with each other. All right, now we have x on the horizontal. x is the initial arm in this case, so it's where it starts to measure the angle. r is the terminal arm, and this is the arm that makes the angle. So x is the starting position, initial arm, meaning starting position, and r would be considered the terminal arm. Where is it going? And theta is the angle in standard position. Stand, again, standard position is measured from the positive x-axis. So these are definitions. Now, I can draw another terminal arm as such, where the terminal arm, let's watch that again, the terminal arm is drawn in the fourth quadrant, so the angle from standard position goes from the black air, uh, ray or arrow all the way around to the purple arrow so that it is from standard position. It is always measured from the positive x-axis going in a counterclockwise direction to measure positive angle. Now, recap. Trigonometric ratios from grade 10 you will learn you learn that the, it is represented by the mnemonic SOKATOA. Now some of you learned SOKATOA written out all in one string of letters. This is the way I represent SOKATOA in order for students not to forget what goes on top, what goes on bottom, and what the main what the main three letters are, being sine, cosine, and tangent. Sine of an angle is represented by opposite side over the hypotenuse, represented by the ratio opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine of an angle is represented by the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, so that's the ratio for cosine. Finally, the tangent ratio is represented by the ratio opposite side over the adjacent side. Theta in this case that we're talking about, is a reference angle. A reference angle is the angle made from the terminal arm to the closest x-axis as such, where the terminal arm is here, 
and the angle that's made with this terminal arm, the closest angle, is this angle here, and that's made with the closest x-axis. We only make it with the x-axis. So the opposite side is found opposite the uh, reference angle, and the adjacent side is found next to the reference angle. The hypotenuse, we always know, is opposite the 90 degree angle. Hypotenuse is always the largest side. The 90 degree angle in a right triangle is always the largest angle. Alright, so in order to do cosine of theta, we would use adjacent, which is the purple, and, and sorry, the black, and then the hypotenuse, which is purple. All right, how are circles and trigonometry related? This is a question that usually people don't understand because we talked about circles earlier and then I introduced Sokotoa to you and now you have to find the relationship between the two. All right, what we're looking at here is again, starting with the beginning, we had our circle on top of a Cartesian plane and then we had a radius, and on that radius was a point P, X, Y. Now, don't forget that X is the horizontal, Y is the vertical, and R is the radius. Based on that information, we can determine that sine of theta, notice where theta is, it's the angle made with the closest X axis right there, sine of theta is equal to y over r. Cosine of theta is equal to x over r. And finally, tan of theta is equal to y over x. Those represent the ratios on the Cartesian plane, provided that the angle is a reference angle made with the closest x-axis. These are all ratios that are, uh, are determined from Sokotoa. So these are the reference, uh, sorry, these are the trig ratios for the point x, y on the terminal arm on a circle in, on a Cartesian plane. All right. The last thing that you have to remember is we talked about this earlier, the relationship that x, y, and r have with each other. x squared plus y squared plus r squared, uh, sorry, equals r squared. So again, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. That's determined from the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem it can only be used in a right angle triangle. Alright, special triangles. A special triangle is is a type of a type of uh, triangle that we need to have exact values for. This is true in two types of special angles. The one of them is the 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, where the ratio where the sides are represented by 1, 2, and root 3. 1 is opposite the smallest angle, 2 is opposite the largest angle, and root 3 remains the middle. The other special triangle is the isosceles triangle, where each angle is 45 degrees and 90 degrees is the uh, main thing because it's a right triangle. And what that happens is the isosceles right triangle has a special relationship that we call the 1-1 one, one, root 2 triangle. The reason is 1 and 1 is because, don't forget, this is an isosceles triangle. Isosceles triangles have two of the same sides, two of the same angles, and two of the same sides. Therefore, it's quite easy to determine the third side using Pythagorean theorem. All right, so there are special angle relationships that go with 30, 60, and 45. Those are sine 30, which is 1 over 2. So again, 1 over 2 because it's opposite over adjacent, uh, hypotenuse. Cosine of 30, which would be uh, root 3 over 2. 
and tan of 30, which would be 1 over root 3. Now, if we're looking at 60 degrees, we need to see it, take it from representation of 60 degrees. Sine of 60, sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. Cosine of 60 is going to be 1 over 2. Tan of 60 is going to be root 3 over 1. Finally, for 45 degrees, sine of 45 is going to be, and it doesn't matter which 45 you choose, whichever 45 you choose, so we can choose this one, sine of 45 is 1 over root 2, a j, uh, uh, cosine of 45 is 1 over root 2 as well, and finally, tan of 45 is going to be 1 over 1. So let's fill all these values in. And these we just covered, and if you can't remember them, just repeat this section of the video again. So the idea is that you should be able to determine Sokotoa based on these special triangles and angles. Okay, next part. Remember before when we looked at sine, cosine, and tan when it was on the Cartesian plane, we found out that sine theta is equal to y over r, cos theta is equal to x over r, and tan theta is equal to y over x. Well, when is theta in when theta is in quadrant one, what happens? Well, in order to find out, we need to go to the second video. So we'll see you on the second video.